The best way to control opposition is to lead it, right? is to get out in front of the pack and say, okay, this way. And then you drive your opposition off the cliff. Right? I'm almost ready to make a, uh, an assessment on the Mueller report. I'm going to focus on the part of the Mueller report that nobody in the press dare touches, which is the actual hack. Right? So the whole, the whole Mueller report is stacked on the idea that the Russians came into the Democratic Party in, in early 2016, in the spring of 2016, March, April, May, and Russian operatives swooped in and hacked the DNC emails and disseminated that information to the world through WikiLeaks and other sources, right? That's the, that's the myth, right? It's total, I, I mean, I'm ready to call it complete and utter, utter fiction, right? Remember, the big, the big move, the big move covers the little move. The little move in this case is that the DNC was not hacked. It was an inside leak. Seth, enter Seth Rich, enter Julian Assange. The big move that covers it is that Trump was behind the whole thing. Right, and then not only was Trump behind the whole thing, but Trump uh, was colluding uh, with the Russians, and that, and then he obstructed justice in trying to cover up the fact that the Russians, well, he was working with the Russians, right? So that's the that's the big fake move that covers the little move that shows the world that the Dem- Democratic Committee and the Democratic Party is a fake and a phony, and that they stole the election. So I'm going to dive. Uh, Let's take a let's take a deep dive today. So I'm going to look at I want to look at the the actual Mueller report and another report <clears throat> that's tied to that the indictment of the Russians, the twelve Russians. Hold on a second. <clears throat> All right. So and then we'll we're going to look at a bunch of videos and then we'll we'll end with we'll exit on our way out with what actually happened. I'll I'll give you a time frame. And we'll talk about Seth Rich. We'll talk about Julian Assange being in jail and what they have said on the record and what we know. So with in terms of the Mueller report, the only part that matters to me is pages 36 through 48, right? And in those pages, you see the creation of this wild narrative, this wild narrative about uh, GRU forces, uh, military Russian military forces coming in and not only hacking the DNC, right, but also putting in malware where they were using spear phishing uh, expeditions. What that means is like it's when you get an email, right, and it says, "Oh, your 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 link is broke. Kindly put in your password, uh, Google password, and we'll get you out." And allegedly, that's that's what they were trying to say. That that's how they fished out Podesta's emails. Right? It was all Russian hackers, but the timeline and the story doesn't it doesn't it doesn't add up is what I'm trying to say, right? So, so you can go through pages 36, 37, and you'll see all this this insane talk about military units 26, 165, and 74455, right? And the, the GRU, right? And it goes on and on and on, and it makes reference, right? There's no evidence in this report that points to a thorough investigation of the DNC servers. There's nothing, there's nothing in here, in, the whole Mueller, in Mueller's whole 470 pages, that they actually looked into the, uh, the, the evidence surrounding the story that they're telling in terms of uh, Russian operatives. The only thing that they do allude to is this which is the indictment here of uh, the 12, how many? One, two, three, four, five, 15 Russians, right? All Russian names. And this is the indictment of uh, United States versus Netyakso. Netyakso, right? This, so this is the indictment, 29-page indictment that was signed by, signed by Mueller July 13, 2018, right? And in this, you see over and over again, right, it names all the names, right? It tells you play by play what each one, each one of these terrible people, these terrible Russians did in the defendants. But more importantly, what it says is, is this. It says, starting in at least March 16th, right? 
It says, in or around April 16th, April 2016. By in or around April 16th. It doesn't give any specific dates. So how do you know? I mean, is an email confirmed? Isn't it? Does an email have a timestamp? And why are you saying in or around? Because you don't know the conspirators. So when you read through the actual indictment that these Russians, mysterious Russians, not a single one of them has ever been brought to justice. They're just names in a, in a, in a pot. It looks great. And you say, well, who would go through all this, all this uh, work to, to create this elaborate conspiracy? Well, it's fiction. It's fiction writers. It's, it's legal fiction writers, lawyers that sit around and they write this kind of crap. And they, they, they well weave a story. So what, just bear with me. What I'm trying to say is when you go through the entire uh, 12 pages that I mentioned, pages 36 through 48 in the Mueller report, you can find that online, and then you go to, it always references Netsakyo indictment, right? And then you go to that indictment and you see the same. You just see a glorified storytelling where the Russians hacked the, uh, hacked the election, hacked the DNC servers, right? So let's look at the time frame. This this um, publication here did a great job of summing up the time frame as it is as it pertains to Mueller's investigation. Right? Okay. So just bear with it. Right? So in mid March, two cyber units of the Russian military agency called GRU sent hundreds of spear phishing emails to Clint- HillaryClinton.com emails, DNC emails, and Gmail accounts used by the Clinton campaign. The spear phishing campaign allowed them to gain access to John Podesta's email accounts. Uh, Podesta was a Clinton campaign chairman. So they're saying mid-March 2016. Try to follow the dates, the timing, right? But there's no evidence. There's just a, it, it's just a mid-March, right? There's no, there's no solid evidence in an indictment. You usually have exhibits. In Mueller's report, you would have an exhibit pointing to a, 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 a in, the, in the report, it would reference an exhibit of what evidence you're leaning on. There's nothing like that at all. Nothing here. All we're, have, we're, all we're supposed to do is believe what Mueller's saying. And where did he get his information, right? Allegedly, a, an organization called CrowdStrike, which was, a, was, a, was leased out when the DNC finally realized, in theory, that, oh, we've been hacked. They called their buddies, CrowdStrike, to come in and solve the problem. And the next day, the leaks uh, hit the public. Uh, so that's, that's the rough time frame. But let's listen to the nonsense. So then April 12, GRU gained access to Democratic uh, Committee, the DDD, the DCCC, right? No, the DDDC, right? Democratic, it's the, they got it wrong. <laughs> it's the DCCC, not DDDC. So the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, right, gains access. Two days later, they gain access to the DNC. Two days on the same day through June 8th, they compromised more than 30 computers. In April, this is all consistent with the, with the Mueller report, how they explain it. But this is a summation. It's pretty good. April 19th, GRU uh, regist- registered a domain named to release stolen documents called DC Leaks. Now, I looked for DC Leaks, right? I looked for DC Leaks in uh, who, who, uh, who Is, and it's registered to someone in Canada. It's still up. I mean, it's, the, the site itself is not up, uh, DC Leaks, but the ownership of it is someone in Toronto, Canada. Right? Who the hell knows who it is, right? So... Uh, it, then in June twenty second, right? So so all this noise they're saying go, is going on that Russians are prowling through the email system, right? But then on June twenty second, WikiLeaks tells Guccifer two. Uh, I'm sorry, back it up. June fifteenth, GRU uses Guccifer Word, WordPress blog to begin releasing data online. All right, so the first release was June 15, 2016, right? Let's look at that. And here it is, right? You go to WordPress, and there's the, there it is. There's the, first in, there's the first entry, June 22, 2016, and what's in it? Right? 
So you look and uh, you hit that. No, no, no. Let's go back one. Let's go back, go back, go back. La, 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 la. Hmm. Got locked out. Ah, la, la. Wait, just bear with me one second. Ay, 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 ay. Mm-hmm. So there's a way of getting back to. There's a way. I don't know why I'm locked out of it. But anyway, there was a there was an entry that said June 15th, June 14th. And I don't know why it's not here anymore. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Wait, wait, watch, watch, watch. Ah, ba ba bing, ba bing. I got it. I cracked. I cracked the code. Oh no, no. Page five. Get out of there. Where is it? Where? Here it is. No, 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 no. Come on, come on. Give it to me. There it is. All right. So June 15th. So that's consistent with the time frame. Guccifer 2.0 DNC service hacked by a lone hacker. Let's look. And what's in it? That was the Donald Trump report. And it was evidence that the donors, this is what Bernie Sanders had been saying all along, that the donors were pouring money into the DNC to support Hillary Clinton. Millions and millions of dollars. They gave up all the names, the corporations, how much, million, million point two, right? right? Other evidence, all kinds of evidence of what the, the actual scandals that were going on, the amount of money pouring into the DNC at the time, right? So that's Guccifer 2.0, right? That was that's consist that's WordPress, Guccifer 2.0's WordPress blog, releasing data for the first time June 15th. Right? Then there's according to Mueller, then after the release, then June 22nd, right? June 22nd, uh, 2016, WikiLeaks tells Guccifer, quote, send me any new material here for us to review, and it will have a much higher impact than what you are doing, unquote. Now, again, we don't have Julian Assange to verify any of this because they got Julian Assange in a cage, right? And we can't ask the leaker, Seth Rich, because he's dead, right? So we don't know if that is actually true. Julian Assange is alive. Has he read the Mueller report? And uh, who knows? Who knows if, he, if anybody could get him a copy of it? To see to 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 have him poke the holes in the story, so then and remember that uh, Seth Rich dies. Just keep this date in mind. Seth Rich dies on July 11, right? Seth Rich is dies on Ju- on July 11, right? So June 4, June 15th, right? The WikiLe uh, Word WordPress releases some data on June 22nd. WikiLeaks has this alleged discussion with Guccifer 2.0. Now, I'm going to say Guccifer 2.0 and DC leaks are fake. They are United States intelligence. Just view it in terms of a it's crowdsource, crowd strike, mixing, getting the story, getting trying to get in front of the story so that they could lead the opposition, right? Because they already had been caught cheating in the election, right? That's that was the the point of it, right, that that this stuff was bleeding out. And to cover the bleeding out, it was to blame a foreign entity so that everybody would focus on Russia, Russia, Russia. Oh, how terrible Russia is. And you wouldn't look at the actual evidence in the record, which was that the Clinton Foundation at the Clinton campaign was ripping off Bernie Sanders, sticking a knife in his back, cheating all the way up to the highest levels of government. It was Loretta, Loretta Lynch was probably Obama. They gave everyone cover. The FBI, Comey, McCabe, Peter Strozak, all those guys. Pay, you know, they all were involved in conspiracy to elevate Trump as the pipe pi- in the pipe piper strategy, eliminate Bernie Sanders, and have Hillary Clinton elected. That was the, the scam. That was the 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 whole story. And when it failed, it failed. So. So then June, June 22nd, WikiLeaks releases on June 20, July 22nd, right? So, oh, so July 14. Now, again, Seth Rich is killed on July 11. On July 14, Guccifer 2.0 sends stolen emails and documents to WikiLeaks. We don't know that to be true. We don't know when Julian Assange r- received documents at all. 
We could suspect that he did it as far as, as, as early as March and April, maybe even March, April, May. But there's no guarantee that he received uh, the, the, the documents on the 14th. There's no, there's no evidence of that. That came three days after Seth Rich's murder. On Seth Rich's uh, laptop, the FBI has stated that there was, he was in communication with WikiLeaks. And three days later, three days prior to this, he was killed. And now, now again, Guccifer 2.0 is saying that the emails were sent to WikiLeaks. Now, remember, Guccifer 2.0 and, and DC Leaks are United States intelligence. They've already been co- co-opted or they're, they're being controlled. They're the controlled opposition now. So they're, they're leading the story, right? To 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 get in to say okay we're giving we're in charge now and we're giving the the evidence to to WikiLeaks but WikiLeaks hadn't hadn't dropped anything yet but they knew it was coming right that's the point they knew that 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 Assange had the stuff because he had said he had the stuff he had the emails right so on July twenty second right three days before the Democratic National Convention. WikiLeaks releases more than 20,000 emails and other documents stolen, right? Okay, so, and that's when Debbie Wasserman Schultz got fired. That's when the, when, when, when the, all the Bernie Sanders people walked out of the convention. That's when the Democrats stole the nomination and gave it to Hillary Clinton, right? July 25th, FBI begins a probe. <laughs> July 25th. So after the fact, right, now they're saying the FBI steps in. After all of these computers have changed hands, after the DNC gave the gave a crowd strike the opportunity to come in and mix up the whole thing, right? Now the FBI comes in. Right? It's it's almost it's almost, it's unbelievable, right? FBI never investigated properly and never lo- never examined those servers properly. The chain of custody changed by the time the FBI was even in the picture. Right? So, again. Everything that Mueller is basing it on is 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 stacked on a on a bunch of lies, really, because there is no we don't have the actual evidence that Russian people came in and 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 you know and and rigged and were doing all this stuff. It's just computer computer data that was revealed uh, through CrowdStrike. Uh, so continue uh, June June through August. Guccifer two point zero begins. Talking to reporters about opposition research they stole. Pfft, who? Who are they talking to? It's bullshit, right? So even if it was, Guccifer 2.0 is now United States intelligence talking to the opposition research, talking to reporters to confuse the shit out of them. Right? Is this a theory? Is this a conspiracy theory? No, it's based on it's based on the facts, right? Between because it's based on the actual evidence that I'm going to show you. Now and it's also based on the testimony of the publisher, Julian Assange. Right? But they're trying to create this big story. Oh, there's so many people involved and so many, so many Russians hacking and so many FBI's and so many organizations trying to get to the bottom of it. But really, it was, it was rather simple. It was one guy that, that, that sucked the information out of, out of the DNC servers right, and then handed it to a publisher. That's really all it is. So between October 7 and, and November 7, WikiLeaks released more than 50,000 documents stolen from Podesta's emails. Now, that is an interesting date because why did Julian Assange wait all that time? If he already had Podesta's emails, if he already had Podesta's emails, why did he wait till October right before the election to do it? I mean, it's a great time to do it, right? Maybe that was his plan. But did he have it all along? That's the point. And we, we don't know that. But Julian Assange definitely knows it. Right? Even if he doesn't give us the source, he knows that, that uh, he was holding Podesta's emails right up to the other thing. The other thing is uh, Roger Stone and, and, and Jerome Corsi. Look, Seth Rich was a Bernie Sanders supporter. Understand that. He was working within the DNC on uh, voter registration expansion. He was a Bernie guy, right? And when, when, when Hillary Clinton, when the Clinton campaign came in, took over the DNC and cheated Sanders, that was motive. 
motive. Motive. It was motive to get in there and be a, be a hero and get the DNC emails and show the show the world, show the public. First, it was shopped to. I heard, you know, New York Times turned it down, Washington Post turned it down, and WikiLeaks took it. Right, and and for for whoever DNC leaks is and Lucifer 2.0, these are fic- these are fictional characters. They're not real. They're not real entities. So. So the information hits the public, pow, right? And um, let's see. So Julian Assange in his own words. Let's watch it. You've probably seen this before. Let's watch it again. Donald Trump has had a disastrous few weeks. If you look at the polls, he needs a miracle. Um, In the American political lexicon, there's such a thing as the October surprise. There's also something, before we watch the whole thing, there's something in the Mueller's report that says, uh, describes on page 48 of the Mueller report. Let's look at that first, quickly. Page 48 of the Mueller report, he says, he says, um, this is a big contradiction in Mueller's story, by the way. Page 48, uh, okay, so as, uh, beginning in the summer of 2016, Assange and WikiLeaks made a number of statements about Seth Rich, a former DNC staff member who was killed in July 2016. The statement about Rich implied falsely that he had been the source of the stolen DNC emails. That's a matter of opinion, right? That is, there's more evidence to suggest that he was the source than not the source. On August 19, 2016, on August 9th, 2016, WikiLeaks... Um, WikiLeaks uh, Twitter, uh, announced a, a reward, $20,000 reward, for information leading to the murder of DNC staffer Seth Rich. Likewise, on August 25th, Assange was asked in an interview, August 25th, right? Check this out. What is, um, what is, what is the date on the, on, the, on the video? August 9th, right? So... Mueller is saying August 25th, but there's already a report out on August 9th. So let's look at what Mueller found. What, what happened? He missed it? He didn't see the, the report that everybody else is looking at on, on August 9th? He, he waited till August. He only saw what was published on August 25th? That doesn't make sense. Assange was asked in an interview, why are you so interested in Seth Rich's killer? Right? So he's, he's referring to something else that happened later. But let's look at what Assange actually said two full weeks before Mueller uh, uh, addresses it in his report. The stuff that you're sitting on, uh, is, is an October surprise in there? We Do you even know what you're sitting on? WikiLeaks never sits on material. Uh, our whistleblowers go to significant efforts to get us material and often very significant risks. As a 27-year-old uh, works for the DNC, who was shot in the back, murdered uh, just two weeks ago uh, for un- unknown reasons, as he was walking down the street in Washington. So that was that was just a robbery, I believe, wasn't it? No, it's, there's no finding. So uh, what that's are you the suggesting? Sort of, what are you suggesting? What, I'm suggesting that our sources uh, take risks, and they are they become concerned. Uh, to see things occurring uh, like that. But was he one uh, of your sources then? I mean... We don't comment on who our sources but are. Why but why make the suggestion about a young guy being shot in the streets of Washington? Because uh, we have to understand uh, how high the stakes are uh, in the United States and that our sources are... You know, our sources face serious risks. Uh, that's why they come to us, so we can protect uh, their anonymity. Uh, but it's quite and, something to suggest and, a murder. Sorry. That's basically what you're doing. Well, that others have have suggested that uh, we are investigating to understand uh, what happened uh, in that situation with Seth Rich. I think it is uh, a concerning situation. I, there's not a conclusion yet. We w- wouldn't be willing to um, state a conclusion, but we are concerned about it. And more importantly. Um, th- a variety of WikiLeaks sources are concerned when that kind of thing happens. So the the takeaway from that is you got to understand is this right? 
The thing about the thing about that, first of all, that's Julian Assange in his own words telling you that that Seth Rich is the leak. Seth Rich is the leak. He's telling you, right? Uh, and people were, were offended by that uh, reporter pushing Assange. No, that's what you do. That was a great job, right? That guy did a great job. Now, why, if if this evidence exists, right, and Julian Assange is saying in his own words that Seth Rich was the leak, why did Mueller never bother to question Julian Assange, right? Somebody could have went over there and questioned him to get his 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 spin on the story. Nobody. He's the number one. He's the number one guy, right? And they and and Robert Mueller never. Uh, they never questioned Julian Assange, right? Never. Uh, so here's another one. Listen to this. So so that's Seth Rich, right? Enter Seth Rich. The the leaks began on June. 22nd of 2016 and on July 11 Seth Rich was killed right so 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 the, and then 3 days later Julian Assange dumped the mother load right he dumped all the stuff in mid July we had seen some of it through through DNC leaks and and um Guccifer 2.0 then then Jul- then Seth Rich is killed and Julian Assange dumps the mother load not the Podesta emails. They came later. He dumps the mother load, right? Okay, so is Seth Rich, who is Seth Rich? Good afternoon. I'm still reporting on the Clintons. This is an anonymous source alert, and at least that's more than either the Washington Post or the New York Times has given you. This guy's going to do a good job. At, uh, I just want to sum it. So, summation. So, Seth Rich, he worked at the DNC. He's walking in his home one night, right? He's walking from a bar, Lou's Bar and Grill, in Washington, D.C. He walks out around 1.30 in the morning, and between 1.30 and 4.30, at 4.30, he's on his corner from his apartment, and the theory is that he was shot with two, two bullets in the back, and he ended up in the hospital close by. Now, there is no police report. There is no ballistics. There are no witnesses. There is no gun there is no bullets, there's no autopsy, there's no funeral records, there's, there's just very, very sketchy family testimony, right? That's what's going on here, right? So, so the, okay, so, so, this, I, so listen to what happened. A person on something called BoardNet and within BoardNet on something called forward slash Paul forward slash posted the following last Wednesday, May 17th. I am a fourth year surgery resident here who rotated from WHC, Washington Hospital Center, last year. It won't be hard to identify me, but I feel that I shouldn't stay silent. Seth Rich was shot twice with three total gunshot wounds, entry and exit and entry. He was taken to the OR emergency where we performed an X-lap and found a small injury to segment three of the liver which was packed and several small bowel injuries, pretty common for gunshots in the back exiting the abdomen, which we resected 12 centimeters of bowel and left him in discontinuity, didn't hook everything back up, with the intent of performing a washout in the morning. He did not have any major vascular injuries or otherwise. I've seen dozens of worse cases than this, which survived, and nothing about his injuries suggested to me that he'd sustained a fatal wound. In the meantime, he was transferred to the ICU and transfused two units of blood when his post-surgery crit came back at minus 20. He was stable and not on any pressors, and it seemed pretty routine. About eight hours after he arrived, we were swarmed by LEOs, law enforcement officers, and pretty much everyone except the attending physician and a few nurses was kicked out of the ICU. It was weird as hell. At turnover, change of shift, that morning we were instructed not to make rounds on the VIP that came in last night. That's exactly what the attending said, and no one except me and another resident had any idea who he was talking about. No one here was allowed to see Seth except for my attending physician when he died. No code was called. I rounded on patients literally next door, but was physically blocked from checking in on him. 
I've never seen anything like it before, and while I can't say 100% that he was allowed to die, I don't understand why he was treated like that. I'm just one low-level doc. Something's fishy, though, that's for sure. Well, let's... That is for sure. It is fishy, right? The other thing is, if someone... They still haven't found the, the murderer, right? Someone shot, shoots, shoots a kid in Washington, D.C. Usually uh, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a, a bad day, the police can get that guy in 24 hours. Two years later, nothing. You don't know. They still don't know. The family's not irate of who shot Seth Rich. Right? So no, no suspect, a botched robbery. I, I heard that the mayor of the city of D.C. or the deputy mayor of the city resigned when, when, the, when um, she heard that idea that it was a botched robbery because there's no evidence to suggest that it's a botched robbery. Again, it's just another fucking story, another, another fabricated story. So botched robbery gone bad. So that's what happened to Seth Rich. Uh, according to this, uh, this, this anonymous post by a doctor, it does suggest that Seth Rich did somehow get to that hospital and in that hospital, he died or was gotten rid of or let out the back door. Something happened in that hospital. But was he shot in the way that they said he was shot? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. He wasn't shot on the street. Was he, was he grabbed between 1.30 in the morning and 4.30 in the morning by you know, thugs, by, by uh, mil- our military people and beat the shit out of uh, you know, intelligence agents, who did you know? What did you know? Where'd you get that information from? What else do you got? We never saw Seth Rich's laptop. We never saw his telephone. Now, the FBI, I said before, FBI claimed, one agent at least claimed that there was evidence on that laptop that Seth Rich was in contact with WikiLeaks. Right? And we never saw that information. So, so here, just Seth Rich, if you want to read it, I'm putting all the links down below. If you want to see them, just... Click on him yourself. So Seth Rich murdered. This is a long, nasty, stupid story. And you see how gaslighting works, right? This, we knew the story in 2016, and that's the story I just told you. A mysterious murder, two, uh, two, you know, right two, three days before WikiLeaks dumps this massive pile of, you know, pile of emails. And, and, and all along, Bernie Sanders is getting robbed. People are so irate, so pissed off that the Democrats are about to steal this nomination away from Sanders and give it to Hillary Clinton, right? That's in, in context. Whew. So that's, so there's a lot to it, right? But um, the takeaway is this, that it is very likely that, the, that there, was no, there was no Russian interference whatsoever, right? We know that there was no obstruction. There was no collusion with Donald Trump. Why? Because there was no, there was nothing happening. There was nothing, nothing actually happened. And once discovered, the, the investigation died. Once, once it was actually discovered, who was behind it? And I, I still lean on, on this guy, right? But the, the most important thing right now is, is Julian Assange. He holds the, the answer to this mystery. And I will say, Julian Assange under this extreme circumstance, needs to come forward. He needs to put this, this nonsense of, of, of integrity or how, whatever he envisions as integrity, hiding a source or, or uh, keeping a source private. you got to let go of that. The, the stakes are for your own self. You're in jail right now. If you have documented evidence of you communicating with Seth Rich a, a, an exchange, an email chain of, of, of events, how you were communicating with this individual, you must release it now. If WikiLeaks has that, you must release it now because if, if and when that happens, the whole house of cards falls and the attention will shift away from chasing Donald Trump around and, and chasing um, you know collusion and obstruction and we can focus on the real crime which was creating this elaborate piece of fiction that Russia had something to do with the mishaps of the Democratic Party and uh, the, the, more importantly, Hillary Clinton and her campaign, John Podesta and the rest of them. Marcus Conti reporting, oh, but while you're here, kindly, if you like this kind of work and you support it, uh, please uh, become a Patreon, um, consider PayPal if you're a one-time contributor. 
if you're if you send to um, if you become either one of them I'll, and include your address, I'll send you some free stickers. And uh, what else can I say about that? So, and also don't forget to subscribe. Marcus Conte reporting.